Hi all, good evening and welcome. I am Ridul Mishra from the Corporate Communication team and on behalf of Keresh, I welcome you to our today's discussion on city gas distribution sector and we sincerely appreciate your time in joining us for this webinar. We would like to welcome our esteemed guest speakers for today, Mr. Sanjay Kumar, Managing Director at Indra Prasth Gas Limited, Mr. Venkatesh Palampati, Chief Executive Officer at Mega City Gas Distribution Private Limited, and Mr. Ashok Kumar Sharma, Chief General Manager, State Bank of India. The session will be moderated by Sudhir Kumar, Director at Carriage Ratings. Uh, we will commence the session with the presentation by Janki Aswani, Assistant Director at Carriage, uh, which will be followed by a panel discussion. We'll be having a Q&A session with the audience at the end of the discussion. In case of any queries you are requested to key in in your panel, you can also key in during your questions during the discussion uh, session is on. Now may I invite Janki to make a presentation, please. Thank you, Prudul, for the introduction. Good evening and a warm welcome to all the participants and the esteemed panelists for today's webinar, Will Rising Natural Gas Prices Limit CGD Sector's Growth? To set the context for the flow of presentation, the key messages are share of CGD is expected to increase from 21% in FY22 to 30% by FY30 in India's gas consumption mix. Investments to the tune of around Rs 2 lakh crore are envisaged under the 9th, 10th and the 11th CGD bidding rounds, which would give massive push to the CGD infrastructure in the country. CGD demand for the priority sector is expected to increase to around 51 mmSCMD by FY30 as against 19 mmSCMD in FY22. APM gas prices have increased by around three times during the past one year and are expected to further increase to more than $10 per mm BTU in H1 FY24 basis the existing formula. While gas continues to be competitive, soaring gas prices have led to reduction in the cost competitiveness of gas vis-a-vis -vis alternatives. As far as performance of the CGD companies is concerned, volumes have contracted since Q4 FY22, while spreads per SCM have improved. We now move on to the first slide of our presentation. The energy requirements of India are largely met through coal and oil, which jointly account for more than 80% of the energy consumption during FY21. The share of gas in India's primary mix was around 6.3% in FY21 as against 24.4% globally. In order to re reduce carbon emissions, a lot of thrust is being laid on cleaner energy sources, due to which the government of India is putting great emphasis on India being a gas-based economy. And for that, it has committed to achieve 15% share of gas in the primary energy mix by 2030. While we have covered the present level of gas consumption in India and the government target by 2030, it is also important to look at the aspect of domestic gas production and LNG imports, which we shall be covering in our next slide. As seen from the chart, the gas consumption in India has increased at a CAGR of around 3% from 141 mmSCMD in FI15 to 175 mmSCMD in FY22. On account of domestic gas production, which has largely remained range-bound, India's incremental gas consumption is being met through imports, and reliance on imported RLNG has increased year-on-year year except FY22 and H1 FY23. One of the reasons for decline in the import dependency is the soaring gas prices, which we shall cover at the later part of the presentation. We will now move on to our next slide. High penetration of gas would require transmission capacity along with RLNG terminal capacity. Both these capacities are expected to grow significantly by FY24 as shown in this slide due to operationalization of under construction gas pipelines and upcoming RLNG terminals, which include Jhara, Jafrabad, Dhamra, Jaigar, etc. Now, we have discussed about the potential for gas in India and the requisite infrastructure which is being laid for meeting this potential. 
in the next slide we would be talking about the sectors which would be contributing to higher penetration of gas in india in india gas is consumed by fertilizers cgd power refineries petrochemical and other segments which include steel plants gas pipelines etc fertilizer and cgd are the largest consumers of gas in india during fy22 out of the total gas consumption the share of cgd sector has consistently increased from 11% in fy15 to 21% in fy22 the only exceptional year was fy21 wherein there was a decline due to the pandemic now this share of 21% is expected to further increase to around 30% by fy30 which would largely largely be driven by the gs awarded in the recent cgd bidding rounds where which we have covered in the next slide post the ninth round of bidding the cgd sector has seen massive growth in terms of total geographical areas which have been bidded till 2018 india had only 92 gs covering around 11% of the total area and 20% of the total population with 202 gs awarded in the 9th 10th and the 11th bidding rounds india is likely to have total 294 gs with an area coverage of 88% and population coverage of 98% also in the recent bidding rounds the cgd companies have bidded very aggressively in terms of minimum work program for cng stations and dpng connections over the coming 8 years with increase in the gs and based on these biddings the coverage of cgd infrastructure is also expected to significantly grow up the cng stations are expected to grow at a cagr of 21% whereas the dpng connections are expected to grow by around 37% by fy30 now this appears very significant vis-a-vis -vis the growth we have achieved so far having said that we believe that the actual mwp uh, the, that the actual achievement of this mwp targets would be lower considering higher cost involved in connecting households in tier 2 and tier 3 cities effect of high gas prices ever evolving threat from evs etc now uh, with this uh, mwp targets and the increasing in infrastructure we believe that the total demand from the priority segment would increase to around 51 mm scmd by fy30 as against 19 mm scmd in fy22 of which majority demand is expected to come from cng while we have covered the uh, the aspect of expected uh, increase in the gas demand on the back of growth in the cgd infrastructure it would be imperative to touch upon an important aspect uh, which is gas pricing that we shall be covering in the subsequent slides in india domestic gas prices are determined as per an approved pricing formula with that takes into consideration the weighted average of gas prices and volumes in the international hubs that is the henry hub alberta national balancing point and the russian gas as shown at the left hand side of this slide the price and volume data used for calculation of this price is the trailing four quarter data with one quarter lag prior to the pandemic the domestic gas prices were largely ranging from 2 and 1/2 dollars to 3 and 1/2 dollars per mmbtu which went down substantially for one year to 1.79 dollars per mmbtu due to the pandemic thereafter post the pandemic and the present geopolitical scenario the prices have almost trebled during the last one and a half years and have reached an all time high of 8.57 dollars per mmbtu basis the existing formula the prices are expected to further go up to more than 10 dollars per mmbtu therefore the government has set up the kirit pari committee for reviewing this pricing formula so as to ensure fair prices to both the consumers as well as the producers now on account of increase in the domestic gas prices the cost competitiveness of cng has reduced vis-a-vis -vis alternative fuels like petrol and diesel which we have shown in the first two charts of the slide as far as evs are concerned cng has a higher running cost as compared with evs 
However, on ownership cost basis, CNG has an edge over EVs due to higher initial cost of electric vehicles. Having said that, the gap between ownership cost of CNG vehicles and that of EVs is declining on account of soaring domestic gas prices, which we have shown at the chart at the bottom of the slide. Now, as a result of the same, uh, some dip has been witnessed in the new registrations of CNG vehicles during the current year. The passenger vehicle segment registered a dip in quarter two of FR23, whereas the commercial vehicle segment registered a dip from quarter one of this year, as shown in the first two charts of this slide. In addition to the same, there is an evolving threat of EVs for the CNG segment for which we would like to have insights of our esteemed panelists in the later part of this webinar. Now, not only CNG, but the cost competitiveness has also declined in the DPNG segment vis-a-vis -vis LPG, which is shown in the left chart of the slide. As a result of the same, new connections in the DPNG category have been hit in the H1 of this year, which is shown in the right chart. Now, till now, we have been discussing about the rising uh, domestic gas prices and its impact on the CNG and the DPNG segment. In the subsequent slides, we should also be talking about the imported, imported gas prices and its impact on the industrial PNG segment. Historically, uh, spot LNG prices and crude oil have largely moved in tandem. However, the spot LNG prices have increased more steeply than crude oil as shown in the left chart. The main reason for this sharp increase are increase in the demand post-pandemic, Russia-Ukraine war, which has impacted the gas supplies to Europe, some disruptions, disruptions on the supply side, etc. Now, as new GAs are ramping up their industrial sales volume, for which long-term supplies are not yet fully available, the LNG imports for the CGD sector have registered a decline over the past two quarters on account of the high spot LNG prices. Uh, gas has become quite costly, uh, co quite costly for the uh, industrial segment as compared with some other industrial fuels such as naphtha, furnace oil, etc., as shown in the left chart. However, when we look at the connections, the connections in the industrial PNG segment continue to grow despite high prices, which can be seen from the right chart. We would like to have insights of our esteemed panelists on this also in the later part of this webinar. Now, in the next slide, we will talk about the performance of the CGD companies, companies amidst the challenges around gas prices. CGD companies have significant pricing power as a result of which they are able to pass on the higher input cost to their consumers. In this slide, we have evaluated the performance of four CGD companies whose aggregate volumes account for around 70% of the total CGD volumes of India. As can be seen from the left chart, due to price hikes, the CGD companies are able to improve their spreads per SCM despite increase in the gas prices. Nevertheless, their beta margins have contracted over the past year, over the past one year, whereas sales volumes have declined over the past three quarters. The decline in the sales volumes is mainly due to lower industrial volumes, as has been discussed in the earlier slides. Uh, now, while gas prices have started to moderate, they still continue to be high. Hence, we would be keenly watching as to how the CGT companies are able to in increase their volumes while maintaining the margins. Having talked about the industry dynamics and the performance of the CGT players, we believe that the situation is challenging. However, the same is transitory and is expected to correct in a year or so. Also, older CGT companies having strong balance sheets would be able to withstand this challenging scenario, whereas we would be closely monitoring the CapEx rollout plans of the new CGT entities. With this, the factors that we would be closely monitoring for the CGT companies are priority of domestic gas allocation for CNG and DPNG segments, recommendations of the Kirit Parikh committee 
with respect to domestic gas prices and the li- likely impact of the same on the cgd companies competitiveness of gas vis-a-vis alternatives despite price hikes ability of the cgd companies to pass on higher input cost and at the same time impact of the price hikes on their volumes penetration of electric vehicles and government policies surrounding the same with this we come to the end of our presentation thank you everyone i now hand over the session to mrudul for further proceedings over to you mrudul thank you janki uh, now may i invite mr sudhir kumar to take over the session please uh, sudhir is a director at kerej ratings and he is a part of the infrastructure vertical and leads the energy infra- infrastructure team He has an experience of more than 17 years in covering various types of corporate and infra ratings, including ratings of power, gas, and CGD companies. Over to you, Sudhir. Uh, thank you, Madhul. Thank you for the quick introduction, and uh, thank you, Janki, for the insightful presentation which you made. Uh, today, we are very lucky to have a very strong uh, panel, and uh, uh, that too very balanced. Uh, we have got representation from uh, the old uh, strong. Uh, uh you know psu backed entity like igl quasi psu so to say we also have got uh, mr venkatesh uh, from uh, uh, mega city gas being one of the private uh, city gas distribution company and also we have got uh, mr ashok kumar sharma uh, cgm sbi to give the views on the uh, risk analysis part of it uh, so I, I hope that we are able to very deeply engage and deliberate on the issues concerning the city sector. Uh, I would f- introduce the panelist today in the alphabetical order. Uh, we have got our first panelist as Mr. Ashok Kumar Sharma. Uh, Mr. Sharma is the Chief General Manager at State Bank of uh, India. He is heading uh, Project Finance and Structuring Strategic SBU of SBI since September 2022. prior to that he was general manager for the same vertical from uh, may 2019 to october 2021 he joined sbi in year 1991 and worked through various assignments both on the retail and corporate credit side in the past he has handled uh, various uh, credit and as- assignment as dgm uh, overseas branch dgm nehru place delhi as well as vp credit as sbi singapore he is also the member of task force for setting up uh, national bank for financing infrastructure and development which is nefed and he has also supported setting up the bank under the chairmanship of shri kv kamat uh, from november 21 to august 22 very warm welcome to mr ashok sharma to the webinar uh, our next panelist is shri uh, sanjay kumar uh, he is the managing director for igl uh, the largest cng distribution company Uh, in the country operating city gas distribution networks across uh, 30 district in four states including national capital territory of delhi mr kumar is a mechanical engineer from iit kharagpur and an mba with an experience of over 35 years in the gas sector he joined gale india limited in year 1998 and has developed deep insights into gas and lng value chain before joining the current assignment at igl uh, mr sanjay kumar was responsible for overseeing and growing gales gas marketing and transmission business in the year 2011 mr gumar was tasked with setting up gales overseas lng trading subsidiary by the name gale global singapore pt limited in singapore where he played a very instrumental role in developing the subsidiary into a well established player in the region he is also the he has also served as a chairman of uh, maharashtra natural gas limited mngl and was earlier in the board of Uh, Gale Global Singapore PT Limited. Uh, a very warm welcome to Mr. Sanjay. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, our third panelist is Mr. Uh, Venkatesh Palimpati. He is currently the CEO of uh, CEO and the director of Mega City Gas Distribution Private Limited, which is uh, currently operating 22 GAs across India. Uh, he has nurtured the CGD business since its inception in 2011. and has played a instrumental role in shaping and scaling up this particular business unit in the past he has uh, handled many complex and challenging assignments uh, including various epc projects in india kuwait tanzania zambia uh, he did his uh, ms in industrial management from uh, texas a and m university 
and BTEC in Mechanical Engineering from CBIT, Hyderabad. A very uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Venkatesh Palampati. Uh, very welcome to the webinar. Uh, with this, I you know once again uh, welcome all the panelists and sincerely thank them for agreeing uh, to uh, our request and uh, share their uh, views and thoughts and perspective on the various issues concerning the CG sector. Uh, without wasting much time, I would now start the you know panel discussion, and uh, I would like to pose the first question to Mr. Kumar. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar, uh, uh, you know, IGL being one of the, uh, uh, or rather the largest player in the CG space, it would be pertinent to understand uh, uh, about uh, the issues around uh, gas demand and how do you see it. In the presentation, Janki had uh, mentioned that, you know, Government of India has targeted the gas consumption, uh, share of gas in the overall consumption to go up to, you know, 15% by 2030. And current uh, share is around six and a half to seven odd percent, which requires a very huge jump. Uh, to give you a perspective, we have grown at a uh, CAGR of 2.5 percent in terms of total gas consumption in the country, including imports. And we are targeting about 10 odd uh, percent in terms of CAGR growth from today to 2030. So, in this uh, context, uh, and also considering the current uh, you know gas prices and the volatile scenario around gas availability. Uh, do you find these targets aggressive by GOI? And, uh, you know, in your view, what would be the fair assumption regarding the overall CGD sector related demand in, say, MMS CMD terms? So, two questions. You are on mute, sir. The current primary energy mix of uh, gas is 6.5%. And uh, the questions are whether it is theoretically possible to go to 15%. Now, as per our calculations, if you want to take this uh, to 15%, we will need consumption of about 450 to 500 million cubic meter per day by the year 2030. Now, it is possible to reach that kind of level, provided the prices are moderate. You know, if the current force majeure situation that we are facing in the country and in the world market, the gas prices are much higher than in any other year that you have seen. The average price of uh, this calendar exceeds $25. Uh, if you uh, calculate the average of uh, spot uh, LNG market. Now, with that kind of pricing, the... Uh, Achievement of 15% uh, primary energy mix uh, looks difficult. But if you look at the history of last 20-30 years of LNG, you will find that uh, in, in most years, the price of LNG has actually remained high for 2-3 months and then gone down. And it, it has cooled off to normal levels of $7-$8 or even lower than that or $10. So if those prices are there, $8, $10, $9 of the LNG, then it is possible to reach higher consumption of gas in the PE mix. The, uh, the other aspect is that uh, APM and non-APM gas is being used for CNG and PNG. For that, you have already, uh, uh, Janki has already made the presentation in which he was referring to the, the Kirit Parik committee. Hopefully, they will come up with a solution which will be helpful for the CGD sector to grow. Uh, regarding the, the CGD sector assumption of 51 million, that we will definitely achieve. Even you know at higher prices of $12, $15 of world market, but with APM price of $6, $7, we can achieve $51. The actual estimate... Of uh, you know, if the prices are moderate, we can easily achieve about 100 million cubic meter uh, per day of consumption in CGD by 2030, because the number of GAs that has been pointed out in the presentation post uh, round eight, so ninth, tenth, and eleventh round, they are so many and so so much of the 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 country has been covered by CGD licenses that it is quite possible to achieve consumption of 100 million cubic meter per day in the country in CGD sector. Whether this will help us in achieving 15% or not, for that we will need moderate price levels. This is my take on this question. Sorry, uh, I, I yeah, don't yeah. remember the second question you posed. 
uh, i think i was referring to the uh, overall cgd sector demand in mmscnb term uh, say by 2030 if you have some uh, broad estimate with you now that's what i i was referring to that only the the presentation showed 51 million cubic meter per day but if the prices are moderate which means apm prices are limited at 6 dollar or 6 and a half dollar and the world lng market prices remain at 10 dollar then we can easily achieve more than 100 million cubic meter of consumption in the cgd sector because okay. the scope is scope is huge you know the whole country has been licensed has been authorized and it is quite possible that all these networks when they are set up there will be huge demand for png whether industrial commercial or domestic or in the cng sector also okay uh, i think let me bring in mr venkatesh also into this uh, conversation uh, talking about the availability mr venkatesh uh, given the increased demand for priority sector gas uh, do you see uh, you know government further increasing the allocation of uh, uh, city gas uh, natural gas towards this scg sector and and uh, and if not then uh, will this uh, non availability of adequate domestic gas i think most of the players are uh, placing their bet on the availability of uh, cheaper domestic gas on their plants so if it is not available uh, do you think to what extent this will hinder the growth prospects of the new companies in this domain uh, i think while it would affect to both the kind of companies old and new uh, but but i think it would more of a issue with the companies uh, which are relatively new so uh, on these two questions uh, your quick remarks sir yeah um, coming to the uh, domestic gas availability you rightly said uh, day by day we may have to blend uh, the open market gas it may be the open market domestic gas imported rlng whatever it may be yes even during our bidding and also in our uh, dfr and feasibility checks we have been keep on blending apm along with the open market gas for the viability factor and still we are confident that yes we can uh, accommodate and be competitive with the other fuels in the market okay okay and do you sense uh, any further uh, increase in the allocation by the government of india towards the cd space uh, the domestic gas i'm talking about particularly Yes, I do sense because uh, we envisage right now uh, HPHD or the difficult fields are not part of APM. We all know. We yeah. we envisage that yes, uh, a share of even uh, maybe uh, uh, pooling of both the difficult and uh, easy fields will come in in the, in the future, which will make it a little slightly higher than APM price, the gas pricing, but still it should be viable and affordable. Okay. very 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 interesting uh, now now let me bring mr uh, uh, ashok sharma ji into the conversation because uh, sbi is one of the you know biggest lender to the cgd space these days apart from few of the nbfcs uh, uh, mr sharma a lot of comfort is uh, again as i uh, spoke with mr uh, venkatesh a lot of comfort is drawn from the availability of domestic gas uh, which is available for cng and the png dpng segment uh as a as a lender how do you you know factor these long term risk because uh, you may see one fine day government reducing the allocation uh, or increasing the allocation towards some other sector so how do you as a lender uh, you know factor these risk in while you do the appraisal for uh, uh, the cgd entities on the project finance basis uh and and uh, and also do you factor in the increase in the domestic natural gas prices uh, beyond a point right because it will at the same time affect the uh, competitiveness of uh, cng versus the alternate fuel so two questions uh, uh, mr sharma to you yeah so uh, i put it this way see let us look at the longer term uh, pricing advantage of the alternative fuel we have with the cng and the png so we all know that the, there is a 15 to 20% discount between the two on the longer term basis of course shorter term deviations are there variations are there in the market so even if you look at let us say the apm gas is not there i am looking simply at the rlng versus the the other alternative fuel so if the 15% 20% discount is available on the longer term basis that is this fuel will continue to play uh, or give a good advantage to me and when the we are talking of the giving the 25 year uh, loi to these uh, cgd players that is on a 25 year cycle uh, 
some some average can be assumed and they would earn a decent ebitda margin as we have seen let us say you, uh, the margins have come down to 15% uh, we have seen the high of 30% as well yeah longer term basis uh, it will balance it out that is the view we have on the short term term basis of course challenges are there why the challenges are there see uh, the lpg prices versus if you look at the mm, png prices the lpg prices have been kept at certain level where the png prices have been allowed to float if i put it that way because on the png side many of the private players are there uh, public sector players are there so the differential has come down but even with the differential coming down uh, we have not seen reduction in the demand uh, see as you must have seen in the quarter one of fi23 the cgd demand grew by 18% so despite the increase in prices we haven't seen the reduction in the demand on the cgd side mm-hmm. now i give, just give one practical example say in delhi your uh, cgd is costing 1 kg around 75 76 rupees and let us say petrol is costing 96 rupees presuming the both the gives you same mileage so 76 suppose you get a mileage of 18 and 96 also you get a mileage of 18 so you have a 20 rupees additional in your pocket which gives you another 25% so yeah. despite the shorter term challenges that we are having the pricing advantage would continue and in the longer term our opinion is that these advantages these disadvantages would balance it out so we do not see big challenges and one more thing you must have observed the ability of the png players to pass on the prices to the to the consumer See, PNG versus other modes of finance, the convenience is very high. So Absolutely. the PNG players, uh, PNG consumers, even though the pricing may be little higher, but in terms of the convenience, they are very, very happy in consuming that. So we haven't seen on the both PNG and the CNG side consumers moving away despite the higher prices, and that that is good for the lenders, good for the industry. Yeah, absolutely. But sir, uh, uh, considering the fact that. Uh, uh these these uh, domestic uh, 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 gas production that has been static uh, for past couple of years i think i was looking at 2014 to 2022 now almost it has become the remain the same and uh, we are placing all our big bets on the fact that there would be domestic gas availability uh, so to what extent uh, this particular factor plays a role uh, while you are appraising the projects Sir, if you look at the August September number, I think up to 94% of the APM gas was made available to the CGD sector. So okay. this number, as uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar was saying, that if you go into a 100 mm mm CMD kind of number, then this number will come down because okay. probably as of now the visibility of such a higher gas production in India is not there. Although a lot of DSF kind of fields are coming up, but still uh, they are in a stage wherein you cannot project what kind of gas can come out of uh, those fields. so we have to depend upon our lng but what i am saying despite our dependence on our lng and the ability of the png plus to pass on the prices the ebitda margins would continue in a decent range uh, see 30% ebitda margin for any company in any sector is a abnormal even 15% 16% is considered a good number so with 15% 16% as well the companies would do well and as a lender we are comfortable with that kind of ebitda margin so i do not see a, a risk a beyond a point uh, even with this kind of pricing okay so i think by far uh, uh, most of the panelists have you know uh, have said that you know the issues around uh, availability of uh, gas uh, are there in the uh, spot, short to medium term but on a longer term basis you you kind of see that these uh, effect would even uh, out and the uh, gas sector would continue to grow though not at a very strong pace but but in the near future there would be some issues around the gas availability uh, continuing the issue of the gas availability mr sanjay kumar uh, we we see that there are lot of uh, uh, rlng imports which are there into the country and uh, Uh, on the spot side we have seen lot of uh, volatility uh, yesterday uh, there was one long term gas deal which was signed between uh, qatar and sinopac uh, 4.4 mm tpa for a 27 year period i uh, do not see such long term deals uh, happening in india so in context of uh, uh, you know these long term deals not happening uh, how are the large cgd companies like yours uh, you know are planning for such long term gas purchase agreements uh, in this backdrop how do you see this long term gas arrangements falling in place 
see the even the largest cgd company in the country may not be so you know so large to enable handling large lng contracts lng contracts even if you purchase one cargo per month it is equal to about 3 million cubic meter uh, of gas per day now that kind of volume uh, for igl at least buying that kind of uh, market priced uh, rlng from or lng from an international source which has got its own you know volatility uh, because most of it is indexed on henry hub or on brent or on jcc now these indices they do not have anything common with indian uh, consumer indian gas market so there is no relationship between the indices and the the consuming uh, you know people the consuming uh, society in the country whether it is the cng consumer or uh, or the dpng or the industrial customer now all these uh, places there are alternate fuel which uh, you know um, uh, mr venkatesh had referred to uh, in the industrial sector there is this industrial LN- lpg which is very cheap actually because it is under gst so and even though the prices may be same today but the gst gives them an edge over gas the same is the case with commercial also there they can use uh, lpg now <coughs> household we agree uh, with sharma ji that um, dpng uh, is actually a premium fuel and there is a lot of comfort in having a dpng connection because you don't need to keep a cylinder in your house Correct. now considering all this it is still uh, i think few years uh, that you know when when the the cgd company has got its volume so big that it can handle an lng contract which will be uh, making up the shortfall of apm and non apm gas you see you may be uh, knowing the 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 formula the the household gas and the cng transport gas comes from government allocation gas which is apm and non apm gas priced at 857 today now uh, i heard uh, sharma ji tell that uh, 94% of this requirement is being met by uh, the current apm non apm gas available for cgd sector actually uh, this month it is about 85% so it will keep going down you know as the the demand increases because every quarter this figure is revised so what that is why in in my first uh, you know um, uh, first uh, to the in in my answer to your first question i had said one very specific thing that we need the rlng market also to be in good range of say 10 dollars 8 dollars 6 dollars now if that kind of prices are there in the rlng market then that gas can be used for meeting the shortfall in cng png which is dpng ipng and cpng mm-hmm. so that is required it, it is a must that the whole gas sector is in a steady state it's not that some day the prices are 50 dollars some day the prices are 30 dollar next day it comes to 10 dollar then nobody makes investment nobody goes for conversion you understand so uh, considering this when the growth happens it is still 3 4 years away when the cgd companies themselves can directly sign an lng contract however there are sellers there are reliable sellers in the country domestic sellers who have got long term contracts who may be uh, you know contemplating upon signing contracts like you have referred to like the chinese contract uh, signed 3 uh, days ago so they they are offering volume to us and these are quite uh, good uh, contracts they are not these contracts are uh, let me correct they, these contracts are not available in last 2 3 months but they will be available shortly as soon as the market normalizes so cgd companies are basically contracting with the domestic sellers who have got access to market determined price gas which could be rlng or hthp gas or some free price gas that is my answer yeah uh, so sir uh, do you see uh, increasing availability of uh, compressed biogas or uh, coal bed methane as a supplement uh, to the you know uh, domestic gas and can it take some load or it is uh, completely too early to talk about it so the biggest source of domestic gas for next 10 years is going to be 
the new developments the mostly hthp and other uh, you know mdp gas market determined uh, you know free free price free marketing free pricing gas available every you know few months we are having some sort of bids for that and people are buying that gas and selling that gas also on exchange and all that the second source of availability will be cbm gas already two three blocks uh, are producing significant volume of gas uh, whether in suhagpur or in uh, west bengal there are some other places also the the source of cbg which is coming from uh, uh, from the agricultural waste or from the press mud or from the cow dung etc mm. that is still limited though the potential is 15 million tons in a year but it will take some time for us to reach there that sector is still struggling with you know these are initial days for that and uh, we hope it it uh, picks up because it will be the required import substitution step that we are all yearning for uh, as of now the production is limited to a uh, few thousand uh, scm per day only okay great uh i think you know i would now move on to the next specific aspect which i have which is with respect to the capex plan uh, and the mwp achievement of uh, many of the cgt players uh, in this context i would like to bring in uh, mr venkatesh uh, uh, mr venkatesh uh, domestic png is not a very profitable segment due to the initial high capex requirement and you know subsequent recovery over a longer period of time while in mumbai and delhi where there are dense uh, uh, installation uh, you would still make uh, commercial better commercial sense but for the uh, newer gas which are largely in tier 2 and tier 3 towns uh, how do the uh, new cgd entities uh, placed to achieve their uh, mwp targets particularly with respect to dpng uh, segment mr venkatesh yeah um coming to the dpng segment uh, we all know it is not uh, very much attractive but uh, it can be uh, in done a spaced manner we we should first uh, even though we, we are in a tier 2 districts or anything we we try to focus on the urban population first uh, try to accommodate maximum encroachment in the urban population and subsequently in a phased manner come to the less denser population that's okay. the only way left uh, uh, to make it a little better viable uh, solution okay okay and and uh, you know uh, link to this uh, uh, mr sharma uh, uh, as as a lender how do you see this uh, uh, shortfall in mwp achievement uh, do you do you kind of factor this uh, in in your base case assumption or uh, how do you handle this issue surrounding shortfall in mwp achievement we do factor and see uh, as we understand that uh, when you are bidding you have certain numbers no, that you need to have uh, the uh, ga in, in with you then only you can work forward uh, the companies also do the break even kind of thing okay i have uh, committed so many uh, these numbers but at what kind of numbers i am breaking even so we work with those break even numbers and add some cushion to it and try to understand that even with the penalties whether the business is viable or not so based on that we accept and uh, many times what we typically say suppose that the at the end of 5 year or the, or at the end of 8 year you have committed some numbers so with the capex that you have invested for a lower number are you able to get say a dscr of 1.25 so we accept a lower number the the intent is try to try to understand with the penalty whether the business is viable or not and many of the companies while bidding they they, they certainly take care that although the mwp targets for 5 year and 8 year are high but if they are able to not able to achieve the entire amount entire number maybe 25% lower 30% lower so with uh, factoring in penalty whether they still making sense or not if it is making sense for them it makes sense for us so based on the, that assumption we move ahead okay so that means there some uh, uh, basic level of uh, short achievement you factor in your base case model because uh and at the same time uh, how much is the kind of uh, internal returns or the dscrs which you can are comfortable with are looked into uh, in detail so uh, pretty much i think the same way the other uh, financial institutions are also looking at it uh now now sir let us uh, move to one important segment i think uh, when we were discussing with our uh, uh, other uh, participants a uh, lot of uh, uh, questions were around the threat of evs Uh, and and what kind of impact it would have on the uh, 
uh, CNG space. Uh, so my question is to Mr. Sanjay Kumar. Uh, sir, we see a lot of uh, uh, push for electric buses in the urban centers. And uh, I was looking at some data point that over the past couple of uh, months, there have been more uh, CNG, more electric bus registration uh, versus the CNG bus registration. And uh, there is a lot of, you know, fame related subsidy also going towards this segment. And apart from that, the other particular uh, uh, two wheelers and uh, uh, passenger vehicle, we are seeing a lot of push coming towards the EV side. Uh, you uh, derive maximum percentage of your revenue or profitability through the CNG segment. How do you see this, uh, you know, threat of EV evolving over the next couple of years while it is still some time away? But as a uh, premier uh, uh, CGT company, how do you see this threat and how are you mitigating this uh, threat uh, in the times to come? You see, uh, EV threat is for real. You know, one cannot deny that. And we at IGL have accepted that this threat is there. We believe our uh, you know CNG volume may be impacted, especially in Delhi. In other areas, it will still take uh, you know 10-15 years. But in Delhi, in the national capital territory, a uh, lot of stress is there on EV buses and EV taxi, etc. So the threat is for real. Uh, in next five years, we will start uh, feeling the the the, the hit on uh, on CNG uh, volumes, and uh, in order to mitigate that, we are trying to be a part of that game. So, uh, so that we continue to be an energy company, and uh, uh, we are a significant partner in EV business also. Regarding, uh, there are other. You know, CNG related uh, diversification that we are thinking of, uh, for instance, uh, long haul transport. Can we fit a uh, type 4 cylinder on buses which can travel for about 1000 kilometer in one field in Delhi? Because the, if, you, if, you, uh, if you are following this sector, the price of CNG uh, is low and in the surrounding area, even up to 300, 400 kilometers, the price of CNG is very high. So Correct. it is possible to have a model where you fill CNG in Delhi, go to say Jaipur, go to uh, Chandigarh, go to Dehradun in, in in the luxury buses, go to Kanpur and come back and then have the next fill again in Delhi. So that kind of model we are also working on. But coming back to the original question that you have, EVs are uh, you know going to come. Uh, presently, whatever EV buses are available, they are not so good because I find many of them on the street under breakdown. But uh, they will definitely evolve in a year or so. They will become, uh, you know, more efficient. They will get over their teething problems. Okay. Uh, I, I think a related question is to Mr. Uh, Venkatesh. Uh, uh, when we talk to a lot of uh, private uh, CGD companies, they talk about uh, pre-poning their you know, CNG expansion plans because that is you know, more profitable vis-a-vis -vis the other type of uh, connections, whether it is DPNG or IPNG. Uh, in that context and what Mr. Sanjay Kumar just said, uh, how are you, uh, you know, going to uh, handle this EV threat, uh, which is for real uh, as the other participants are also confirming to? Before Venkatesh comes in, I must clear one uh, misconception. The CNG business is today not profitable. For last two, three months, we are yeah. losing a lot of money on that when, you know, for last one and a half months rather. Okay. Because the prices have gone up and uh, if you increase the price uh, so high that it is near to diesel price, nobody will buy, uh, nobody will convert. Nobody will convert. Then, then this whole ecosystem will get destroyed. So we are in a lot of pressure, you know, we, uh, you know, before increasing the price any further, we are thinking twice, thrice, you know. Now, Venkatesh ji. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coming to the yeah, CNG segment, yes, we accept and we are also planning to pre pone our uh, construction activity because uh, since there is uh, very less time available, uh, we want to. Uh, capture that market uh, as early as possible before the EV comes and plays a bigger role. But however, yes, uh, as uh, Mr. Sanjay said, yes, it is a threat and we all accept it. But 100% EV will take some time, might take a little longer time. 
Absolutely. If you ask me, if you ask me, uh, CNG would be the last fossil fuel to eradicate. Go away before before EV and uh, you know hydrogen or etc. etc. Do, uh, dominate the uh, energy sector. So yeah, yeah. I I still have time. I would say CNG still has a little more time than petrol and diesel. But yes, uh, we also have in the plans, and uh, we want to finish the CNG capturing. as early as possible we don't want to wait for the entire eight years yeah yeah uh, i think we have got a little more time before we go for a uh, audience uh, questions uh, uh, mr sharma i think i have got one specific question for you uh, so far in the cd sector uh, with the presence of companies like igl mgl uh, bgl which are uh, having very strong balance sheet and uh, also in the initial part of their operation supported by Uh, strong oil psus uh, so um, more or less their projects are financed on a balance sheet basis uh, now but now uh, with the advent of you know new uh, players coming in with the uh, limited background uh, which are financing their project on non recourse basis so as a lender do you believe that now the sector risk are uh, well understood and uh, uh, there is enough appetite for project financing of cgd projects in the country or there are still some open risk which are keeping the lender away so i think cgd sector uh, uh, the it is understood quite well and the large number of lenders are keen to participate in the funding uh, one advantage in balance sheet funding as we all understand is the pooling benefit is there so you have multiple gas so some gas are giving lower revenue the the older ones are giving higher revenue so that advantage is there as, as you rightly said when the new players are coming in uh, and they are doing the ga on spv basis so some of them have the monetization in mind so maybe after stabilizing the ga they will monetize it or they are raising certain equity so they uh, the investors want to have a rights over the specific spv so both models are in the market uh, the spb model as well as the balance sheet model and uh, based on a case to case basis we take a call but uh, there is no discomfort whether it is a spb of course balance sheet gives an added uh, advantage added comfort to the lenders okay okay uh, thank you sir uh, for those remarks uh, my last question is to again mr uh, sanjay uh, sir you uh, have a very uh, long track record of operation and uh, in that sense the uh, because of the evolving leg- regulatory landscape uh, the marketing exclusivity under uh, the gas would be coming to an end or would be ending uh, so how do you see this as a challenge for the incumbent player like you uh, who have a relatively long uh, you know uh, operation so far open access not only in cgd like you know in many other fields the new entrants there are always uh, so many things uh, infrastructural and other entry barrier that uh, the existing player these are the advantages with the existing player and that is always there so as and when there is open access we will be able to deal with it there is sufficient moat that th- that we have created around our business i would you know this matter is slightly sensitive so i would not like to say much about that okay okay Uh, so i think you know we had a very uh, enriching uh, discussion so far and uh, i think we covered uh, most of the issues surrounding the sector whether it is uh, demand pricing threat of evs uh, and the issues around uh, open access uh, and uh, i believe uh, the sector is on a very significant growth path and uh, with the policy thrust and the enabling uh, policy environment it will go a long way so uh, with this i think we end our uh, panel discussion uh, and we can go now for a uh, few of the questions from the uh, audience which is you know eagerly awaiting to uh, ask few of these specific question so thanks sudeer uh, dear participants you are requested to please key in your questions if you have any to the panel thank you Uh, request the audience if you want to have any specific question from any specific panelist please uh, write that also
So the session was so good that there are no questions. One one question, sir, I have just received. Uh, it is from the likes of Mr. Mohit, uh, who is saying that uh, uh, in the presentation, the PNG industrial connections uh, were shown to be uh, declining, increasing. Uh, despite increasing uh, LNG prices, so how do we explain this uh, particular issue, Mr. Sanjay Kumar? If you can take this question, that particular chart was not location specific. You know, there are some places where uh, uh, there are regulatory or statutory orders about converting to gas or converting to LPG, etc. Some some such things are going on. Uh, I believe. Uh, the real impact of very high prices would come in coming quarters. This is my belief, because there is always a kind of stickiness in the market that dekhte hai. Let's watch for two, three months, four months, five months. So, uh, although the 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 gas sector and the the fertilizers supply to fertilizer and supply to LPG and supply to power plants have been affected already, but the CGD uh, supplies would be. Uh, uh, the the CGD market would get affected in real sense now. Okay. Uh, and so there is one question from Mr. Amit. Uh, he is talking about uh, that presentation talks about Kirit Pari committee and uh, they are planning to do something with on the prices. So any inkling or any uh, input you have on the prices, how they are going to pan out, or something on those lines. Uh, we only hear what you hear. <laughs> I'm, okay. IGN is not a part of that committee. We are not aware of the discussions. But important constituents of the overall value chain, uh, I'm sure, <laughs> would be significantly. Yeah, but I'll add. Uh, but I'll add to it. But yeah, let's hope that this new new formula will help the CGDs at least. We yeah, are all yeah, waiting. Yeah. Everyone is waiting. That, yeah, on, on that. Uh, statement all the CGD players are agreeing. What Venkatesh ji is telling, all of us are telling that please help us. Because I told you the main problem CNG is no more a profitable business. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's a very strong statement uh, Mr. Kumar has made. Uh, and you know, uh, me, uh, Mr. Sharma in SBI would you know make note of it and, and uh, would, would suitably accommodate this when we prepare our credit appraisal notes. So no, but the one another thing is that ki we believe it is a short term phenomenon. We because it, such high prices cannot continue for so long. You know there will something will happen which will cool down the market. I agree. As I was saying, is a structural disequilibrium uh, which has come now. It has to get corrected. Maybe it may take some time. Sure, sir. sure. Um, I think there are a couple of more questions. I think I have got five more minutes. I will take them. Uh, there is one question from the likes of uh, Bijinder Rathor. He is saying, my question is for Mr. Sanjay Kumar. Uh, can we have some idea of the current average cost uh, lended for bulk handlers in India and how much that translate to lended RLNG cost for the CGD players like IGL? And in one of the news items this month, uh, Petronet LNG has stated that it would be trying to negotiate the long-term gas contract with Qatar ending 2028 at a slope of around 10.2 uh, percentage and the existing contract expiring uh, 2023 is 12.7 percentage slope of the bank brand crude price on a delivered ex ship basis so can we expect every, adequate every, availability of gas everybody in the, in the country whether it is venkatesh ji or myself or uh, any other company mgl mngl gujarat gas anybody will buy a lot of gas at 10.2 percent uh, des i presume that is des price or even if it is fob qatar that's that's not a problem the current okay. price uh, you were asking about the current uh, trend and the delivered price the current price of apm gas is about 8.57 which, which gets delivered to a customer to to a customer like igl which is a reseller in delhi at around 11 dollars and the and the if if this is an uh, LNG contract, then the current LNG prices are around twenty five dollars, which gets delivered to a customer like IGL in Delhi at thirty dollars, and then thirty dollars per MMBTU. I hope you understand thirty dollars per MMBTU is equal to one hundred and thirty five rupees per kg of CNG. 
without any profit for igl or any such network operator so that now you can imagine the kind of problem that we are in whatever is the shortfall 20 15% of the volume that we are selling in cng and png we are buying from rlng market uh, igl itself has done one transaction at more than 38 39 dollars uh, you know for uh, for certain quantity of gas in the month of september now that kind of prices if we are paying then it is the, the impact is huge so coming back to the question the current prices are 25 dollars at port in india and it can get delivered to a customer like uh, igl at 30 dollars and then they have to pass it through their network and deliver to their customers there is an usual cost built into that okay okay and there is one more uh, uh, question from uh, kirtan mehta he is saying on the ev thread can loss of demand from buses be offset by growth in other vehicles assuming that our car penetration will continue to grow Let, let's not forget it's easy to buy a car ev car then then to buy a ev bus ev buses are very costly and the kind of uh, you know Uh, subsidy that is there it will continue definitely but still it is difficult to buy ev bus and that is why i said only one or two state road transport corporations will be able to buy car is very easy to buy uh, to the question that this gentleman raised it is quite uh, likely in fact that is what will happen that the growth of cng will be so high that we will not see any immediate impact and the 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 demand on on the consumption of cng segment will continue to rise for next 5 to 10 years also yeah uh, so just think... add this to this uh, what mr sanjay said yeah we uh, one of our sister company manufactures the ev buses i am in line with him that yes the buses are expensive and we need to uh, uh, have a lot of capex only the road transport corporations who can afford to spend more money have been doing it and that too after the that is only after the came to or the subsidy what we getting from the central Absolutely. government and if you imagine if that subsidy is removed it will become more and more difficult in the days to come absolutely so uh, i think we have you know overshot our time of uh, 5 pm uh, and but uh, i must uh, thank all my panelists and uh, so uh, giving us the you know deep insights in all those issues concerning the sector uh, thank you once again uh, uh, mr ashok thank sharma you. mr sanjay kumar and mr venkatesh over to you uh, mridul for the closing comments yeah thank you sudeep uh, thank you for our uh, dear participants and uh, the guest speakers for the insightful views uh, so it was a privilege hosting you Uh, for any further queries feedback or suggestions you are please welcome to write to us in the comment box uh, feedback mail which will be coming no sooner the webinar ends and uh, uh, goodbye for now I, i request the tech team to log off please thank you <laughs>